Hi, my name is Aryu and welcome to my show, A Sip of Life. Each episode of A Sip of Life is going to focus on achievers. Achievers from various walks of life, be it business, corporate life, sports people, entertainers, social work, professionals, what have you. But the idea is to focus on what made them achieve and what made them what they are. To try and bring out the human element, to try and see if you can relate to that and hopefully inspire you to say, hey, I can do that. I'm going to try and get my guests to talk about not just what they did, but also perhaps share some of their insights, their learnings. So we'll, there will be a sense of humor attached to the whole show. Maybe I can even get them to share some inside secrets as to how they got to be where they are. This show is going to be focusing on one additional thing, which is to try and explore various kinds of beverages as we have these fabulous conversations. And therefore, the title, A Sip of Life. So welcome to my show and cheers. Hi and welcome to today's episode of A Sip of Life. I'm thrilled to have a good friend of mine, PC Bala here. Hi. Bala, welcome to the show. Bala is uh, the executive director and president and uh, one of the founders of Matrix Business, India's uh, leading background verification company. Uh, employs over a thousand people headquartered in Chennai and they do a bunch of very, very interesting things. And, but all of that is a reflection of the very interesting um, person that we have here. So Bala, really want to talk to you a little bit about how you got to where you are and what, what really drives you. Talk to me about your early childhood. Yeah, I was born and brought up in a beautiful, lovely town, uh, Pondicherry. And I uh, did my schooling, uh, most of my schooling in Pondicherry because my father was serving in the Pondicherry government. And uh, moved to Trichyarpalli and uh, did my commerce in uh, the very reputed St. Joseph's College. Yeah. And uh, just to give a flavor to it, I, I was one of the best students of St. Joseph's College. And uh, I was a dramatist too, that was my passion. And uh, post BCom, uh, I came to Chennai. Um, I was not very clear as to what I should do at that point of time. My entire peer group uh, went on to do a chartered accountancy course. Then I decided that, uh, you know, I would also pursue with the uh, CA. And then decide what I should do in my life. So that is how I did my chartered accountancy course in Chennai. Did you know what CA was when you started? I, I dreaded CA because uh, I mean, every student had to study for 8 hours a day apart from going through the articleship period anyway that consumes your entire day. So 8 hours a day was too much for me and my dad was very concerned that uh, this wouldn't suit me you know, for the kind of personality I was or I am and uh, hence he said uh, he suggested that I do MCOM or, and then move on to do MPhil. Else he asked me to do BL but I was keen. I also wanted to do C as simple as that. So to de-risk at that point of time, I also signed up for the company secretaryship course, ACS, CS. You know, after I completed CA, I discontinued, uh, uh, you know, um, completing CS, which I regret till date. I find it fascinating. Your father was an academic. Correct. He was a principal. principal. And you have two brothers, both of whom are engineers and are working abroad. Correct. So this whole business of doing CA. It was such a new thing, isn't it? It is. And uh, I opted for commerce. Uh, when I uh, went into higher secondary course, I didn't opt for group one. All the balancing the equations created a lot of imbalance in me. So, <laughs> so I thought, why should you venture into something which you fear right from day one? But I could have easily got science. But I moved to commerce merely because I didn't like uh, studying science as a subject. Always different. Um, that's been Bala's uh, trademark. Unconventional, uh, trying to do things that he wants to do and not necessarily what the rest of society says. We'll see a little bit more about that. But first, Bala, can I get you a drink? We're in a fantastic bar. Of course, yes. Uh, bar is got, uh, it's very famous for its environment and its fabulous drinks. And um, we have with us over here one of our, uh, you know, the, the very popular uh, bartender here, Vishwajit. Yes. Uh, welcome to our show as well. So, basically, my friend Bala and I would uh, like something to drink. So, what are you going to fix us?
Cheers to Super Life. Cheers. Hey, it looks like uh, Mumbai Indians versus Chennai Super Kings. Uncle <laughs> <Uncovered> drinks. <laughs> Except that I, I don't know about you, Bala, but I'm a CSK fan, so <laughs> even though I may be drinking other colors. Uh, so, Bala, uh, coming back to, to you, you're one of the very few individuals I know who, as a first generation entrepreneur, decided that you are going to start something on your own on day one. You didn't try working anywhere, but you just started your own firm. That's crazy. Talk to me about it. Are you. Uh, it was not by any design that I became an entrepreneur or a set up a professional entity. It was by default, I, will, I would say. We were discussing, I did CA. I cleared my inter exams in first attempt. I completed my company secretaryship course inter also in my first attempt. So perhaps a lot of components set into my mind. But CA finally taught me the bitter side of uh, CA. You know, I started uh, failing. And uh, that was the first blow. Academic failure, first time or anything less than a distinction, forget a failure. CA finally taught me the bitter lesson. Ultimately finished my CA, it took that up. But now I relish my uh, failure in my CA final because that is what made me an entrepreneur today. How, explain that. I thought to myself, if I had gone for some interview, obviously the question would be, you know, uh, they would seek the reason as to why I failed uh, so many times in my CA. I didn't do well, so I failed. But uh, I didn't want to face such questions. And the only way to escape from such questions was, uh, you know, I thought, uh, intro, in, instead of being interviewed, you start interviewing. That was the trigger. No, no, you start interviewing, nobody is going to ask you the question. I am going to own an enterprise, and nobody is going to put across this question as to why you took five years to complete CA. So that made me, that was a trigger for me to set up an uh, entity on my own. And um, starting off something on your own, how were the first few years? Very hard, uh, because home front, dad was very disappointed, uh, because he thought, uh, you know, I wouldn't succeed, huge amount of risk, financial risk, and his other worry was, who would marry you? And I said, I'm not setting up an enterprise to get married. So this is, this is my dream. You said he was worried who would uh, marry you. Um, and was that financial or was that because you were kind of establishing yourself as a risk taker? Financial. Risk and the financial risk. Start a professional entity at the age of uh, 25. Ideal age for marriage what? Would be 28 to 30 perhaps or 28 29. There was a risk. Obviously there is a risk. I mean I would not blame him for that. He foresaw some risk and he was worried. But uh, I went through the normal uh, ritual of a wedding proposal. And there were such questions as to how much you earn. Why is that you are not going for a job? And uh, when will you settle down? And these were the questions where even I never had any clue. And how would you, I mean this is the interview I faced. Perhaps <laughs> how I became an entrepreneur. I managed to sail through and uh, fortunately got married to somebody who never had such questions to me. Nice, very nice. Let, let's talk a little bit about your um, journey as a professional. As I indicated in the beginning of the show, Matrix today is a highly successful respected organization, employs over a thousand people all over the country. More than the thousand employees that Bala has, uh, one of the things that I know Matrix and he are very proud of are the 250 customers, some of the biggest organizations in India and the world in fact, and um, also the fact that they are present in over a hundred locations. But obviously all of this didn't happen overnight. Um, I'd like to understand, what, what were the early lessons? Like any other new CA firm, we started impaneling ourselves with uh, certain uh, regulatory authorities, uh, CNDG for bank audits and stuff like that. We were into conventional practice for the first 2-3 years. But we had very very minimal work. Half of the time we were free, very challenging. Then later we realized that uh, the normal professional practice or the usual professional practice was not our cup of tea. Because you had to compete with uh, huge multinational firms, even large reputed Indian firms and you would get lost. I mean being there surely you may not get noticed or it would have been a very very hard job to go there. So we actually changed track and started focusing on many unconventional professional services. And today that has become a verification service. That was the foundation and we grew the firm from there. So currently we are into 
verification services, enterprise level and consumer level. The consumer level is your background screening verification services where clearly we are one of the leaders and enterprise level verification we are innovated actually speaking a plenty of verification services for the corporates. I want to talk to you Bala about who are your heroes? Who has inspired you? I think there are certainly a few people in the corporate world uh, who have inspired me a lot but outside corporate world there are three people who have inspired me and they will continue to inspire me always. Uh, first is Kapil Dev. I mean, I adore him. Saro Gangoli, great leader. And third, the one and only Sri Rajanigant. What do these three people mean to you? Kapil taught us that you could be a winner even if you are a bit weak compared to others. So that is the lesson I drew from Kapil Dev. Saro Gangoli, for his Phenomenal leadership quality. People may criticize him here and there, but he was an immensely talented leader. I love him for his grit, conviction, and the way he groomed a very young team in a very, very difficult situation, 2000. So I always respect him for that. Mr. Rajinikan, right from his school days, it's a long story. He has inspired me a lot. In fact, I will say that Rajini inspires the nation. So it is not just me, he inspires the nation and the world. And the world. A lot of people now know uh, Bala as the author of uh, two incredible books on um, Rajnikanth. I want you to talk about those books, but I also want you to talk about uh, your interactions with the man. <laughs> and uh, can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, many years back I created a few presentation slides and uh, mailed it across to a few friends of mine. And uh, what was this presentation about? Three or four slides. Um, in fact, I went a little overboard and uh, mentioned what uh, Peter Drucker and Philip Kotler could learn from Rajini's punch dialogues. You know, the management lessons or the marketing lessons that they could pick up from Rajini. There was a trigger much later, four years down the line, where I realized that it could be a book because uh, so much of truth, so much of uh, wisdom in this punchlines. But then there was a challenge. How would I, I was very adamant that I would have to take the best wishes from the man himself. But how to reach it was a major challenge. And how would I write? I am not a writer. There I uh, spoke to my very good friend Mr. Raja Krishnamurti, PT. Yeah. He liked the concept a lot. He said uh, he would also join me in this great uh, journey. He was the person who was instrumental in taking me to Mr. Rajanikanth. Okay. On a day, maybe a big day, I got a call at around 8.30 from uh, Radha Krishnamurti. He said, I spoke to uh, Rajani about it and uh, he wants to meet you. So, you, could you come over to his place at around 10 o'clock in the morning? My God, that was like appearing for my CA final exams. <laughs> I was shivering. I mean, I am going to meet somebody who I have admired for the last 35 years. I am going to meet him, talk to him. And this man was so kind enough to, you know, invite me to his house and discuss the subject. And the first meeting, you won't believe Ali. When I met uh, Mr. Rajanikan, it appeared as though I knew for the last 35 years. And the greatness is Rajani because he gave me the comfort. How have your friends and families uh, reacted to uh, this newfound PC Bala Rajanikan Association? Have you written not just one book but two books? Are, are people thinking of you as a Rajani specialist now? <laughs> yeah, uh, people who know me very well uh, for several years, extremely happy uh, because they knew that I had chased my dream. I could do two books with Rajinikan with two different sets of people. Raja Krishnamurti for my first book helped me a lot. And second book was with uh, Ram Ramakrishnan, another charman, phenomenal work he did uh, for the second book. This has kind of made you reinvent yourself, hasn't it? You are now. Uh aspiring to be a full-time author. Talk to us about your newest work. Uh, yeah, but I have become a writer uh, today. Two books. These are the two books. Uh, are you first? Let me have the privilege of handing over to you. First book, Rajini's Panchatantra. And both are now published by under the banner of uh, you know, Rupa Publications. Fantastic. And this is the second book, Grand Brand Rajini. If you are a brand lover, you will love this book. I wish you read it and send me your feedback. I will. 
I want to do certain, I mean whatever comes to my mind, whatever I, wherever I have some conviction, I want to go and write and uh, maybe I'll attempt something, a, a fiction perhaps and if the publisher is happy, it will get published. Yes, I don't, I don't uh, worry about it. No regrets. Do you have any regrets at all? One regret I would perhaps share is, uh, perhaps I could have studied more. Uh, I, I always want to do something in economics, you know, study more on economics. Uh, at, in a, from a very reputed institution, that is something I didn't do, and perhaps I could have completed my CS, you know, company secretary. Uh, other than no regrets, a successful businessman, a good husband and father, budding author, someone who can claim to know Rajnikan <laughs> um, and been to his house, and someone who has not many regrets as well. So, do you rate yourself successful? Mm, very successful. When I say very successful, I'm not talking with any arrogance. Because I sleep very well, number one. I run an organization, part of an organization, which is doing well, 1000 odd people, 250 customers, good name in the market, hence very happy. I have plenty of time for myself, for my family and my friends. I think uh, you can't ask for anything more. So, if this is the definition of a successful person, I am hugely successful. So, what does the future hold? Yeah, I'm a part of an organization, so that journey will continue, build the company even further. I'll continue to write to the best of my ability, till there'll be some more soul search. Honestly speaking, uh, that is in my wish list to take 5-10 to 10 minute movie that can you know, make you laugh, inspire or, or, or emotionally uh, relate and so on. Bala, you've had many sips of life. What is your message for entrepreneurs starting today? Not just for entrepreneurs are you. Whatever you do, ask a simple question. Instead of asking, can I? Ask yourself, why can't I? You will surely progress positively. Let me add for entrepreneurs specifically. It looks uh, very green, very nice from outside. But every entrepreneur will have a story to tell. It calls for a lot of sacrifice, sustenance and patience and plenty of sincerity in what you do. As long as you take care of the stakeholders around you, I am sure automatically you will be taken care of. Fantastic and I think I love the, the whole way PC summarized it. Don't ask yourself, can I? Be sure and be bold and ask yourself, why can't I? I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.